Okay, okay, good morning again. This is take two. Lady Victoria here this morning again with Victoria School of Etiquette where we offer a solution to all of your etiquette dilemmas. I am broadcasting to you live this morning from the great windy city of Chicago. Chi-town is what we like to call it. And now I guess we have another dilemma. Okay, okay, now let's start again. Take three. Good morning again. This is Lady Victoria with Victoria School of Etiquette, where we offer a solution to your etiquette dilemmas. This is my third chance, so you know the third time is always a charm. We are live again this morning from the great windy city of Chicago. Chi-town is what we like to call it. We are the best in the Midwest, and I thank you for being a part of our broadcast on this morning. We are live this morning in the etiquette studio, and I wanted to show you my breakfast table and share my breakfast or brunch with you. If you've already had your breakfast, that's fine. Just come on in the room anyway and enjoy the display and the live. So you all come on in again. Those of you that were on earlier, I didn't have any audio. So I'm taking that video down and I am starting over and doing another one on this morning. So this is the one that you want to access, but the other one will be down. So you no longer have access to that one. For those of you that are my YouTube subscribers, I won't be uploading that one, but I will be uploading this one, and you will have access to this video later on this afternoon. So again, thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Tag a neighbor, tag a friend, and you all come on in on this morning, okay? So let's go on over to our dining table, our breakfast table on this morning, and just let me show you a little bit what my breakfast table looks like on this morning. You can set yours up any way you like, but this is just a suggestion from me as to what your breakfast table can look like when you are dining. Anytime you sit down to eat, you always want to dine at a table that's been nicely set. It enhances your dining experience and it just makes you feel good. So you can see this morning that I have a breakfast table set, a table set for breakfast with the breakfast settings. And here I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more on one of my centerpieces. This is my fruit centerpiece. And I also have a floral centerpiece as well. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for coming in again. I am sorry about the faux pas earlier on this morning, but here we are starting again. So those are my two centerpieces. This table is set up for a party of three, and we're going to start over here, and I'm going to go through the various implements that are set up. As I said, my table is not bare this morning, but you can see that I have a lace floral eyelet tablecloth covering the table. It's white. White goes with everything, and it just makes for a nice-looking table. We're going to start here with this place setting at the other end of the head of the table, and you can see here where I have the charger plate, or what is also called a liner plate. This one is here, again, to just beautify the table and to enhance your dining experience. This charger plate would be removed when you begin to dine your meal. Di uh, I'm sorry, when you begin to start your meal. If you are dining in a public restaurant, then the waiter, the wait staff, would come and remove this liner plate. And now here, I have our breakfast plate, which is the same as a dinner plate, but since we're having breakfast, this size plate is appropriate. I also have a top of this, a bowl. This would be for your cereal, or if you are having a hot cereal, it would be for your oatmeal or your grits or your malt meal, whatever your warm cereal is. Now, let's go on over to the right side of our place setting. On the right side here, we have a knife, which we'll refer to as the butter knife. And here we have the larger spoon, the tablespoon. This is the spoon that you would use when you are consuming your cereal or your hot cereal, whichever one it is, this is the spoon that you would use. Above the butter knife, placing the spoon back in its proper setting, Above the butter knife, what you can see is always to the right, and the blade of the knife is always facing in towards your place setting. It's always facing in towards your place setting. Atop of the butter knife, we have our water beverage, our glass here for our water beverage. This would be our water glass, or also since it's breakfast, if you are consuming milk or juice, this glass would still be appropriate for that setting. Just to the right of the glass here, we have our coffee cup and saucer. Here is the other spoon. If you were wondering, where is the other spoon? Your teaspoon then goes here, and it always goes at the back of the cup when your table is being set. Let's move over to the right, to the left side over here. I'm sorry, I can't talk this morning. On the left side, we have our forks. Forks typically always go to the left 
of your place setting. And here for breakfast, we have a smaller fork. You might say, hey, that looks like a salad fork, Lady Victoria. Yes, it does, and yes, it is. This fork is a smaller fork with smaller tines because your breakfast fare is typically lighter food. If you're having pancakes or if you're having steak, you can still use this fork, which can also be used as a breakfast fork. Now, just to the left of the breakfast fork, of course, we have our napkin set up. This is a cloth napkin, and this is what I always use when I am setting my table. So you have your cloth napkin set up here, just a little bit to the left of your fork. Above your fork here, we have a small saucer here. This saucer would be where you would have your croissant, where you might have your biscuit or your cinnamon roll, whatever it is that you are consuming, um, you know, that is a, a bread or a starch, it would be here on this place setting. So now you're going to go around to the second place setting, which is set up exactly the same as the first one, but this is how your breakfast table is set up. You always want to realize again that your coffee cup is going to be at the back side of your beverage glass, which is always, again, at the top of your dinner knife. And then here again, you have the same setup over here that you have over there at the other one that I just showed you. Let's move around to the third setting here. Good morning, thank you for joining the broadcast on this morning. This morning we have the third table setting, which is actually set up for a breakfast that I would have had on this morning. Now we talked about here, we have again the liner, the plate, and then you have the bowl. Here in this bowl, I have actual fruit, which is what I would consume on this morning for my breakfast, okay? Now some people like to add something additional to their fruit, they might add various seasonings, or you might have yogurt. Um, some people also use a little bit of whipped cream. That is quite appropriate, and this bowl is appropriate to, to handle that. Okay, now let's look at our beverage glasses over here. We have the same water glass or milk or juice. You have the same coffee cup. And then over here, I have a flute. This flute glass, which is normally used for like champagne or things of that nature, if you wanted to have a breakfast mimosa, then you would use this glass. And always, when I say set your table, use your best things. Don't wait for a special occasion. Every time you sit down to dine, it should be a special occasion. And so you want to make your place settings or you want to make your table as aesthetically pleasing as you possibly can. Even if you're dining alone, don't just sit down and say, oh, it's just me, it's just me, there's you know, nothing special, it's just me sitting here but you always want to make dining a pleasurable experience. Now, here I, told, I showed you my two centerpieces. I have a fruit centerpiece, and then I have a floral centerpiece right in the middle of the table. But let's say that there's a companion with you for breakfast, and they're dining, and they're sitting directly across from you, but you can't see them because of the centerpiece. So what do you do? When dining, you remove it. You can take it off of the table and put it on the sideboard, or you could just move it to another area of the table that is not occupied, as I've done here. This way, you can see your companion across from you. You can hold a wonderful conversation without having to look up and look around and look over. You don't want to have to be doing this or doing this to look over to get their attention as you're speaking. But you always want to maintain eye-to-eye -eye contact. And then remember, when you're sitting down at the table, you always sit. The first thing you're going to do is take your napkin and place it in your lap. You're going to fold the top of the napkin over about a quarter of an inch down. That way you can use it to catch crumbs, food that might fall. And then when you're using the napkin, as you've heard me say many times before, the napkin is not a washcloth. You're not using it to rub across your entire mouth to remove um, any juices from your food. And then ladies, I always say in the beginning when you sit down, the first thing you do is perhaps excuse yourself to the powder room and blot your lipstick because as you drink your beverage, whether it is your coffee cup or whether it is your warrior beverage glass or your mimosa glass, your lipstick is going to stain the glass. And then when you're using, again, your napkin to wipe your mouth, you don't use the entire napkin to wipe your entire mouth. You use it, again, you fold it over, and that little fold, when you reach up to dab at the corners of your mouth, 
or at the bottom of your chin. Here, let me demo here. You're going to dab at the corners of your mouth or at the bottom of your chin, right? To catch any food or debris or uh, juices that may be there. But you're not using the entire napkin to wipe across your mouth. Your two fingers underneath that fold and you dab and you dab and you place it down. When you place it down, if the napkin is soiled, you're going to fold it over again. It's only about maybe an inch or two, an inch and a half down that you fold over the top of the napkin so that you always have a clean portion to dab at your mouth again, right? So that's how we do that. Let's go back to our table setting and conversating. When you're conversating, again, you always want to maintain eye-to-eye -eye contact with the person that's across from you or the person that's on your left or on your right. You don't have to turn your entire body from your chair. You don't have to turn your entire body from the chair, but you just want to be able, when you are seated, you want to be able to see them, but you don't have to turn your entire body all the way around to see the person next to you and to converse with them. So this party is right next to me. I don't have to turn my body entirely around, but you can just turn your head and maintain eye-to-eye -eye contact and you come back to your seated position. During conversation, it is permissible for your forearms to rest against the edge of the table and that's it. You do not want to put your entire elbow on the table. You don't want to sit at the table like this. This is unacceptable. But if you sit with your forearms resting, that is acceptable and that is permissible. While you are conversating, when you go back to eating, you're going to probably eat American style because that's what we are accustomed to. You go back to eating and then again, your arms are not on the table. Your forearms can rest as you are conversating. As you um, cross over, use the crisscross method that we use. You place your implements again on your plate because once your implements, your silverware, once they leave the table and you are using them to consume your food, they do not go back on the table. You don't even rest them on your what napkin because where's your napkin? It's in your lap. So you do not want to soil the tablecloth by putting your used uh, silverware back on it. You don't want to put it back there. You would rest it here on your plate that in that fashion. Your knife, once you use it, your butter knife, which you're going to use to butter your croissant or to butter your breakfast um, sandwich or your biscuit, then your knife is going to rest this way at the top of your plate, and it's always, the blade is always facing in. You don't want to have the blade facing out. Butter knives aren't that sharp, but you still can graze your hand or your finger or your weight staff could graze themselves as they are coming to clear away your implements if your blade is facing outward. So your blade is always facing upward, inward towards you, and that's where you leave it, and you rest it there. When you are done, of course, you all have seen me do this a number of times. When you are done, of course, this is the signal that you would use to let your wait staff know that you are done. Think of your plate as a clock. So you want to rest your implements at 525. Think about 525 on the face of a clock. This is how you would rest your implements. And this is how we do it in American dining. European dining, their style may be a little bit different, but I will address that in a separate video. So that way, this way your plate setting is complete. Ladies, again, with the lipstick on the glasses, most lipsticks have oil in them. And so when you are wiping and you use your napkin to wipe your lipstick, oftentimes the napkins in restaurants are white. And so then once the lipstick stain is on there, or oftentimes even makeup even, they can no longer use that. So it is soiled to them forever, so they will just replace it. It gets thrown out. So in consideration of the facility where you are dining, you want to be able to put those things into place and into practice. And then, you know, another thing that I always say to all of my constituents and to my class is that the manners that you practice in private are the ones that will show up in public. So always be in exercising your best manners always. That way, when you find yourself in a setting 
that um, is public, your private manners will show up. Last thing I want to express to you is I showed you my two centerpieces, but I didn't show you my Mr. and Mrs. Let me show you my Mr. and Mrs. at the table. Come on, let's switch over. I want to show you my Mr. and Mrs. This is Mr. and Mrs. Salt and Pepper. They are a pair. They are a couple. Good morning. Thank you for joining me. So when you pass the salt and pepper, when someone says, could you please pass the salt, which this is the salt. Would you please pass the salt? You pass the salt and the paper, pepper, I'm sorry, together because they are a couple. So they travel together at all times. They may not need the pepper, but you always pass them, right? And that's how you do it. This is our breakfast table setting on this morning. Thank you so much for being a part of our broadcast. Again, please like and share across your various social media platforms. I am grateful of that. We are live this morning inside the Etiquette Studio which is where we typically are on weekends. I just want to show you my signature here. All right here is my signature on my door. And then this is the sign that is outside of my door. Here are my business cards. And then here is my signage out in the hallway of where I am. So you can see the various classes and the courses that we offer. You can see them all here business and corporate consultations, group training and personal coaching, dining manners and protocols, team curriculum mentoring, and so much more. If you'd like to reach out to me personally, here's the number whereby you can reach me, area code 312-857-3542. My website is not on here, but it is in the header atop of this video. So if you would like to, here you can see it from the, right side so you can see it right side up that's my signage on my door here in the Bridgeport Art Center where we host our classes now we will likely like so many others we will be moving to a um, all of our classes are going to be online we're going to be, be moving a lot of the classes online with COVID-19 going on. And so you can expect to hear more about that a little bit later as we get the classes and the courses uploaded and all of that. You will hear more about that. So again, thank you for being a part of our broadcast this morning. This is just a quick sweep of the studio this morning. Some of you have seen it, some of you may have not seen it, may not have seen it. Again, this is the table. These are my privacy panels. This is, um, my, my my wall where I have a lot of things here. You can see that I have the wine and the wine glasses. Um, and then this little nook over here is oftentimes where I do a lot of my reading and my studying. So I just wanted to share those things with you this morning. If you've already had breakfast and you've already had brunch, now you know just how you can sit down to a nicely set table and enjoy your breakfast meal. Again, this is Lady Victoria with Victoria School of Etiquette. Thank you so much for being a part of our broadcast on this morning. Please like and share and subscribe across your various social media platforms. So until the next time, we'll chat a little bit more, but bye for now.